Magic Putty Premium by Infinite Model. This is a very interesting substance. Well, it's a two-part exploit. Exploit. I can never say that right. Resin. And if you've worked with model kits, if you've done prop work, if you've worked on a car, you've worked with some form of resin in one way or another. Fiberglass even uses some resin, if I recall correctly. Anyway, this is very simple stuff. Two-part mix ratio, 50-50. Now, I'm used to using Magic Skull, so it will be interesting to see how this compares to that. From what I can remember, because I don't have the box in front of me, this has a 2-hour working time and a 12-hour cure time. So, it's actually faster at curing than Magic Skull. Magic Skull takes around 24 hours. Also, when using stuff, have a little thing of water with you. I highly recommend it. This is from years of experience. You'll see why, because this stuff is very tacky. Well, the resin is. The hardener isn't as tacky as the resin. You get the resin all over your fingers, but the hardener is a little bit more manageable. And then to keep forgetting in your nails and going all over your skin, dipping it in water when you mix them together makes life so much easier when you mix them. As I said before, 50-50 ratio. But a little tip from me. Use just a tad bit more hardener. If you're going to screw up, always lean towards the hardener. Because if you lean towards the uh, resin, you're just going to, it's not going to cure. Okay, so a little tip from me. Once you've got your ratio figured out, just start the mixing. And dipping in water will make your life easier. Trust me, it's the way to go. After you've got the two pieces completely mixed together and they match in color, like it's just a uniform sort of gray color, now you're ready to roll. There's two ways to apply this. Actually, there's more than two ways. I kind of wish I had some sculpting tools on hand. I did, but I don't know where the hell I put them. And even if you use sculpting tools with this, you have to clean them immediately afterwards. I learned that the hard way, so I should just buy some new ones. Anyway, since I don't have any sculpting tools so that I could just like paste it on like I'm putting on some sort of like Bondo or something, I'm going to have to use my hands and it's going to be messy and ugly. So you can do it where it's mixed together and it's slightly dry, like a little tacky, but it's, you know, malleable, kind of like clay. That's probably the best way to go about it. But if you really, really, really want to work down the exploit you can add a little water to your hands and smooth it out and spread it so that way when you sand you won't have that little line that exposes itself now i want it to be made clear that i was doing this and i wasn't taking it too seriously as i just wanted to show you what you could do with this this is a bit more of a useful tool than what i'm using it for this is ideal for like things that have huge seams let's say you know, you got some sort of resin kit and there's like this big unsightly gap that you don't like, then this is where this stuff comes in hand. You pop it on and you fill that gap easily. It's strong, it bonds well, and it's very reminiscent to Magic Sculpt, which I've worked with my half my life to say. So in this instance, I'm gonna use it to cover the seam line on one of the fuel tanks. The other one I did the tried and true glue method where you glue both sides and you do a little dab of glue on the seam line and let it dry, then you sand it off. This can also be used to sculpt new parts, actually. You know, if you're into that, if you have that sort of ability, most people probably use a 3D printer in this day and age. But if you really want to get some sort of customization, let's say on a Wing Zero Angel Wing and make it more pointy at the edge, that's within your realm of ability. You could modify Death Scythe to be a little bit more edgy. You could do all sorts of things with this, actually, which is what makes this exploit exploit i can never say that correctly a great tool to have in your repertoire i use it for baseline stuff filling gaps maybe customizing something a little bit you could use this in so many ways it's pretty much up to your imagination and your sculpting skill now after the 12 hours has passed you can then sand it like any other part it's a lot like sanding resin because that's pretty much what it is I warn you that this will get insanely dusty. So if you want to avoid dust, wet sand, you know, and wear a mask. You don't want to breathe this crap in. Also, you'll notice I'm using a cheesecloth. There's two schools of thought here with this. Some people avoid the cheesecloth. They say, oh, no, the cheesecloth leaves residue. It screws up your painting. I haven't had much of a major issue. I mean, if you don't rub the cheesecloth on what you're working on, you'll be fine. And then there's the canned air method. So... Either choice is yours. Unfortunately, I must have lost a clip that I showed where I sculpted out devil horns for a human head. I made them for myself with these sort of two-part exploits. Exploits, whatever the hell you call it. So 
you can use it for that sort of stuff too if you're so inclined to do so. And I figured for the hell of it, I would just uh, paint the tubes to show you what it would look like once both these fuel tanks were done. One was using the resin and the other one was just simple glue. The glue one's a little cleaner because I didn't really do my due diligence as they say when it comes to cleaning my work area. But I wasn't really going crazy with it. And you might notice that like uh, the painting of the fuel tanks changed drastically over the course of <laughs> this video. Unfortunately, like I had ideas, they didn't come to flourishing. So then I had to change everything totally around and sort of adapt the paint to the way I'd want it to look. Eh, it looks okay. It wasn't great as far as the paint job. But the seam line, as you can see, the one that was done with glue, I didn't do a very good job on. And the other one was done with the resin. And it looks a little bit better with the two-part resin exploit. So it's all personal preference. I would say most people would stick to the glue and sanding method. Quicker, easier, save a lot of time. Other people might really want to get rid of the seam completely and make it flush. So that's where that filler comes in. Once again, it's all personal preference. I may not have clear coated those. Who the hell knows? Well, that's going to do it for me because uh, I've got so much to do today as usual uh thank you to everybody that shows up and watches this stuff and once again this video would not be possible without new type hq because they sent me the tools oh i forgot you can use my promo code it's a gunpla at new type hq to save 10 percent on your order i'm not very good at these plug things as you can tell i'm not very professional 